Your miracle has arrived. An unexpected and urgent miracle. God has a spectacular revelation of something surprising that is about to be delivered to you in the next three minutes. A true transformative event that will change your life once and for all. This is very important and will happen today, in less than an hour. When the grace arrives, I ask you not to tell anyone, keep silent until everything is ready. For, as we know, it is in silence that we can truly feel and witness God's work in our lives. And at the end, I will pray with you for the realization of all the blessings that will happen in your life. Therefore, it is essential that whenever you hear a word that you feel is directed at you, immediately comment, E I receive, so that the grace begins to become part of your life. How many times have you asked yourself if God can really change your situation? Are you deserving of God's blessings? Well, the answer to that may be different from what you expect, but you will find out later. So, keep your attention and do not get distracted. You know those miracles that we only hear about in testimonies? That's exactly the kind of miracle that is going to happen in your life, so soon you can already smell the victory in the air. Our generation has seen everything, but what God is about to do will leave anyone in awe. I feel in my heart that God is preparing something grand for you. He knows every detail of your life, every difficulty, every struggle you have faced. And my brother, my sister, he is about to do something incredible. That miracle you have been waiting for, that answer you have been seeking, is closer than you think. I see God acting powerfully in your life, I see chains being broken, barriers falling, impossibilities becoming possible. He is the God of the impossible and he is performing miracles in your life right now. God is calling you to live something new, something supernatural. He is calling you to step out of your comfort zone and walk in faith, believing that he can and will do wonders in your life. I see the Lord lifting you up, strengthening you, filling you with courage and determination. Receive this powerful move of our Father in your life. I know it may seem like you are alone in this difficulty you are facing, but let me tell you something, you are not alone. God is with you every step of the way. Pay close attention because in the next two minutes you will have a great revelation. Jesus said in John 16 verse 33, In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. He overcame the world and because he overcame, we too can overcome. The victory is ours in Christ Jesus. No matter how big your problem is, God is bigger. He is the God of the impossible and he is by your side. I feel that God is speaking to you now. He is telling you not to give up, to keep the faith, to continue believing. Your miracle is on its way. Things may seem difficult now, but remember, God is in control and today he has a great transformation for your life. To help you, we have created a tool capable of attracting prosperity and abundance to all who use it. This tool has already helped 10,979 people and it can restore your finances. The tool I am talking about is our newest devotional book called A God Says This to You Today. If you are here today, listening to this, it is a sign that it is your moment to act. Click now on the link in the pinned comment and unlock the portal to your financial freedom, with an exclusive price for a limited time. This is the sign you are waiting for, embrace your prosperous future now. Do not ignore what God wants to tell you today. My beloved son, my beloved daughter, I want you to pay attention because I have a special revelation for you. It is not just a small change, but a true transformation that will guide you on a journey of prosperity and abundance. I am the Lord your God, and today I want to speak directly to your heart. Son, you are the picture of learning and evolution. From the moment I formed you in your mother's womb, I already knew the wonderful plans I had for your life. Every step you took, every challenge you faced, was part of my purpose to mold you, to make you grow and bring you to where you are now. When I look at you, I see not only what you are now but what you are destined to be. I see the strength you put into every struggle, the faith you kept even when everything seemed to fall apart. I see the perseverance that makes you keep going, even when the path is difficult. And I want to remind you that these qualities are not in vain, they are preparing you for greater and better things. Receive this grace, son, daughter. You are not alone in the moments of pain, in the dark nights when it seems that no one understands you. 
I am by your side, I see your struggles, I know your battles, and today I am here to give you a word of life, a word of transformation. Listen well, because what I have to tell you is powerful. I want to take you to a new level, I want you to experience my abundance in every area of your life. But for that, I need you to trust me with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge me in all your ways, and I will make your path straight. Receive this blessing. There are dreams I have placed in your heart, dreams that you may have forgotten or set aside. Today I want to revive those dreams. I want you to know that I am capable of realizing them. Nothing is impossible for me. I also want you to know that in your struggles, I am your strength. In your weaknesses, I am your fortress. When you feel weak, remember that in me you are strong. When fear tries to paralyze you, remember that I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. There are moments when life knocks you down, but I am here to lift you up. When the path seems dark and without a way out, I am your light. When the weight of the world seems unbearable, lay everything at my feet. I am your refuge, your fortress, your ever-present help in trouble. Receive my care, receive my love. Do not let fear paralyze you, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of self-control. Son daughter listen carefully, fear does not come from me, it is a weapon that tries to distance you from the wonderful plans I have for you. I am your father, and today I want to speak directly to your heart about the strength and courage I have placed within you. From the moment I formed you in your mother's womb, I have already equipped you with everything you need to overcome. I created you in my image and likeness, and in you, I placed power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you. Do not forget, fear may seem great and frightening, but remember, I am greater. In Joshua 1 verse 9, I said to you, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This promise is for you. I am with you in all moments, ready to strengthen and help you. Receive my strength, my help. When fear tries to take over your heart, remember who you are. You are my son, my daughter, and I love you with a perfect love. And perfect love casts out all fear. You know, I do not want you to live a life limited by fear. I want you to experience the freedom, joy, and peace that come from walking in faith. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the decision to trust me despite fear. Every time you rise against fear, you are growing, becoming stronger, and I am with you every step of the way. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. This is my promise to you. Receive this truth. If you feel a burden, an anguish, or even fear of the future, let it go now. Feel the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that I, the Lord, give you. I see your heart, I see your worries, your fears, and your doubts. I know that sometimes life can be difficult and scary, but I am here to remind you that you are not alone. In Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7, I said to you, I do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This peace that I promise is real and is available to you now. Let me carry your burden. I am your refuge, your fortress. When the world around you seems to crumble, I am the solid rock on which you can stand. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. You are mine and I care for you with an everlasting love. Receive this peace that surpasses all understanding. You may be wondering about the future, worried about what is to come, but I tell you, do not fear. I am already there. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Trust me, let me guide your steps, one day at a time. I want you to know that in me you find rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am not here to burden you, but to lighten your load, to give you strength when you need it most. 
Life can be full of challenges, but each one of them is an opportunity for you to see my power at work. I did not promise that you would not face difficulties, but I promise to be with you in each of them. And with my power by your side, you can overcome anything. Receive the power to overcome obstacles with my strength now. I want you to remember something important, your gratitude has power. When you give thanks, even in difficult times, you open doors to the supernatural. Son daughter, I am here to remind you that gratitude transforms hearts, changes circumstances, and attracts my blessings. You may wonder how you can be grateful in the midst of challenges. I tell you, start by looking around and seeing the small things I have done for you. Every morning you wake up, every breath you take, is a gift for me to you. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, I said, I give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This does not mean that you should ignore the pain or pretend that the problems do not exist, but to find reasons to give thanks even when everything seems to be falling apart. Gratitude is a powerful key that unlocks my favor in your life. When you give thanks, you are acknowledging my presence and my power, even in the midst of storms. It changes your perspective, gives you strength, and fills you with hope. I know that life can be tough, but I want you to know that I am with you every step of the way. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. You are my beloved son, my beloved daughter, and I care for you with an everlasting love. Receive this special care. I see every tear you shed, I know every struggle you face, and I tell you, your gratitude is not in vain. It is a seed that you plant and that will bear fruit at the right time. Do not grow weary of giving thanks, even if the results are not immediate. I am working, even when you do not see it. I am preparing the best for you. Remember Daniel, who was thrown into the lion's den. He did not stop giving thanks, he did not stop trusting in me. And what happened? I shut the mouths of the lions and saved him. In the same way, I am with you in your difficulties, shutting the mouths of the lions that try to devour you. Gratitude is a spiritual weapon. When you give thanks, you resist discouragement, fear, and doubt. You declare that you believe in my promises, that you trust in my love and power. And I respond to your faith, bringing the peace that surpasses all understanding, bringing solutions where there were only problems, bringing light where there was darkness. Therefore, go down to the comments now and leave your comment of gratitude for everything you already have, for every detail of your life, and see the satisfaction it will bring you. Look I know that sometimes the wait can be difficult, but remember, my timing is perfect. Son daughter, I want you to know that every moment of your life is under my care. Even when it seems that nothing is happening, I am working behind the scenes, preparing something great for you. Receive this truth. I see your impatience, your frustration, your doubts. I see when you look around and it seems that everyone is moving forward while you are standing still. But I am here to tell you that I have not forgotten you. I never forget you. I know exactly what you need and when you need it. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, I said, There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. My timing is not the same as yours. I see the whole picture, I know things that you do not yet know and I am organizing everything perfectly so that you receive the best. I know that waiting can be difficult, it may seem like the wait never ends, but trust me. I am preparing you, shaping your character, strengthening your faith. Every second of waiting has a purpose and at the right time, you will see that it was worth it. My will is good, pleasing, and perfect. Receive the fulfillment of my divine will in your life. In John 8 verse 12, Jesus my son, declared to the people, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. These words are for you, beloved son, beloved daughter. I want you to understand the power and depth of this declaration. Jesus is the light that illuminates your path, the light that dispels all the darkness that tries to surround you. Son, daughter, I know that sometimes life seems dark and confusing. I know you face challenges that seem impossible to overcome. But I am here to remind you that you are never alone. Jesus is with you, guiding your steps, illuminating your path. 
When he said that he is the light of the world, he was promising to be present in all moments, even in the darkest ones. Allow him to be the light of your life too. When you feel lost, remember that Jesus is the light that illuminates your path. He will never abandon you, he will never let you walk in darkness. Trust in him, follow his steps, and you will find the light of life. That light is my constant presence, my unconditional love, my peace that calms all storms. Receive this divine light in your reality. I want you to live in the light. I want you to experience the joy, hope and security that come from walking in my presence. No matter how dark your situation may seem, my light can change everything. It can bring clarity, direction, and a new beginning. I am the God of new opportunities, the God who makes the impossible possible. Now, pay close attention. In Proverbs 13 verse 20, I say, A walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Son daughter, the people you walk with have a huge impact on who you become and the decisions you make. I created you to be wise, to make decisions that lead you to a bright and purposeful future. But for that, it is crucial that you choose your company well. Who are the people you allow to influence your life? Are they people who bring you closer to me or those who lead you away from my path? Walking with the wise is more than simply seeking intelligent or successful people. It is seeking people who have a true relationship with me, who live according to my principles, and who seek my will in everything they do. These people are like lighthouses that can guide you in the right direction, especially when life becomes difficult and confusing. Receive this truth. If you surround yourself with wise people, you will learn from them, grow, and become stronger in faith. You will better understand my ways and how to apply them in your daily life, and this son-daughter will bring you unimaginable blessings. On the other hand, walking with fools, those who despise wisdom, who choose easy paths, who live without thinking about the consequences, can lead you to paths of pain and suffering. These people can influence you to make hasty decisions, to make choices that are not aligned with my will, and this can bring difficult consequences for your life. I love you and want the best for you. That is why I give you this instruction in Proverbs. I want you to be wise, to live a full and abundant life, to reach all the potential I have placed in you. And one of the ways to do this is by choosing well who is around you. I know that sometimes it is difficult, I know it can be challenging to distance yourself from certain people, especially if they have been part of your life for a long time. But remember son daughter, that my desire is to see you prosper, to see you happy and fulfilled. And for that, sometimes it is necessary to make difficult decisions. Receive this discernment that our Father wants to give you. I want you to think about Jesus, my son, who is the perfect example of wisdom. He chose to walk with those who sought the truth, who hungered for justice, who were willing to learn and grow. Even when he was among sinners, it was to transform, to illuminate, to bring my light to them. Just like Jesus, I call you to be light, to illuminate dark places, to be an example of love and wisdom. And for that, it is essential that you are surrounded by people who share the same vision, the same purpose, people who will encourage you, strengthen you, and help you grow. Receive the gift of these people in your life through the action of your Heavenly Father. Share this video with your friends and family, for there is someone close to you who urgently needs to hear this. Send it to as many people as possible. I count on your help, brother, sister. Trust in our Father and follow His commandments. Only then will your life be transformed in a way you never imagined. God's commandments are not just strict rules to limit us, they are loving guidelines from a Father who knows what is best for us. In Deuteronomy 10 verses 12 to 13, the word says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good? God gives us these commandments for our own good. He wants to protect us from the traps of sin and guide us on a path of blessings. When you start following these commandments, you begin to see God's blessings manifest in your life. This is real, brother, sister. It is not theory, it is not just a distant promise, it is God's truth being realized in your daily life. 
receive this manifestation of blessings. If you have strayed from God or are carrying any sin, come back to the Father's house brother sister. God is waiting for you with open arms. No matter how far you feel, no matter what you have done, He is ready to receive you back. Have you heard the story of the prodigal son? It is a parable that Jesus told. A young man left home, wasted everything he had, and ended up in misery. But when he decided to return, his father received him with a feast, with love and joy. That father represents God. No matter what you have done, God receives you with love, with forgiveness, with grace. God's heart aches when you drift away. He sees your struggles, your falls, your pains, and all he wants is to help you, heal you, restore you. There is no sin too great that God's love cannot forgive. In 1 John 1 verse 9 it is written, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is for you right now, brother, sister. Do not let fear or shame keep you away from God. He already knows every detail of your life, every mistake, every failure, and yet he loves you. God loves you with an eternal and unconditional love. I want you to know that you can come back, that you can draw near to God, that He is ready to restore you. God loves you and is waiting for you with open arms. Come and find rest, peace, and a new life in God. Amen. Our expectation is great to see the graces that are about to come into your life. For that, you just need to click on the blue link in the pinned comment and get your devotional. A story of miracles and transformations awaits you. It is important to remember that by clicking on the link, you will be directed to a page that uses the same security technology as major global banks. So you can proceed with peace of mind, knowing that your transaction will be protected. Once the payment is complete, your devotional will arrive instantly in your email. If you are going to let this transformation be part of your life and will get the devotional today, comment, I will be part of this now. Join this prayer community. Subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. This way, whenever God has a message for you, you will be notified immediately. The journey you are about to embark on is full of hope and transformation. Every step you take towards faith, love, and trust in God brings you closer to the blessings He has prepared for you. Sometimes, life can seem like a maze, full of uncertain paths and unexpected obstacles, but know that God is always by your side guiding your steps and illuminating your path. Faith is a powerful tool, capable of moving mountains and transforming lives. When you place your trust in God, you open yourself up to a world of infinite possibilities. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 verse 1 that a faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This means that even when we cannot see the solution, we can be confident that God is working in our favor. Have you ever stopped to think about the power of your words? Proverbs 18 verse 21 teaches us that the tongue has the power of life and death. Your words can build or destroy, bless or curse. When you speak in faith, you are declaring God's victory over your life. Start using your words to bring life, hope, and encouragement. Declare God's promises for your life daily and see how this transforms your reality. God knows the deepest desire of your heart. He knows the dreams you carry, the hopes you hold. Psalm 37 verse 4 tells us, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. This means that when you put God first, when you take joy in Him and His presence, He takes joy in fulfilling the desires of your heart. This does not mean that everything will be easy or immediate, but that you can trust that God is working for your good. Patience is a virtue that is often tested in our lives. James 1 verses 3 to 4 reminds us that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Every challenge, every weight, every moment of uncertainty is shaping you into the person God created you to be. It is in the waiting that we learn to trust more deeply in God, to depend on Him in all things. Prayer is a direct connection with God. It is through prayer that we speak to Him, share our joys, our sorrows, our fears and our hopes. Philippians 4 verses 6-7 tells us, I do not be anxious about anything, 
but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer has the power to change circumstances, to bring peace in the midst of the storm, to renew our strength. Often, life takes us down unexpected paths. We may face losses, disappointments, and challenges that seem insurmountable. But in all these things, God is with us. Romans 8 verse 28 assures us that a we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This means that even in the most difficult situations, God can turn what was meant for harm into something good. You are never alone. Even when it seems that everyone has abandoned you, God is with you. He promised in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, that the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. This promise is a constant reminder of God's faithful love and constant presence in your life. Every dawn, God gives us a new chance, a new opportunity to start over. Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23 tells us, that because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. No matter what happened yesterday, today is a new day, full of possibilities and opportunities to experience God's grace and mercy. Gratitude is a powerful practice. When we give thanks, we shift our focus from our circumstances to the blessings God has given us. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 exhorts us, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks helps us see God's goodness in all things and acknowledge His hand in our lives. God calls us to live a life of love and service. Jesus gave us the perfect example of how to love and serve others. In John 13 verses 34 to 35, he said, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Love is the hallmark of Christ's followers, and it is through love that we show the world who God is. Generosity is a reflection of God's heart. 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 7 reminds us, I remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. When we are generous, we reflect God's character and make room for Him to bless us even more. God is our provider. Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33 encourages us, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When we put God first, trusting him to meet all our needs, we can live with peace and confidence. Hope is the anchor of our soul. Hebrews 6 verse 19 says, and we have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure. Hope in God sustains us in times of uncertainty and gives us the strength to keep going. Even when circumstances seem dark, we can have hope because we know that God is in control and has a plan for our lives. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8 verse 10 reminds us, Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. True joy does not depend on circumstances, but comes from knowing that we are loved by God and that He is at work in our lives. When we rejoice in the Lord, we find strength to face any challenge. God's peace is a precious gift. Jesus said in John 14 verse 27, A peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. God's peace is different from the peace the world offers. It is a peace that transcends circumstances, that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Christian life is a journey of faith, hope, and love. Each day is an opportunity to grow closer to God, to trust Him more deeply, to love more fully. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13, Paul reminds us, And now these three remain, 
faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Love is the foundation of everything we do as followers of Christ. Obedience to God is a sign of our faith and love for Him. John 14 verse 15 tells us, If you love me, keep my commands. Obedience is an expression of our trust in God and our desire to live according to His will. When we obey, we experience the blessing and peace that come from walking in God's ways. God calls us to be salt and light in the world. Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16 exhorts us, A you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Our lives should reflect the light of Christ and point others to Him. The life of faith is a journey, not a destination. Philippians 3 verses 12 to 14 encourages us, And not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Each day is an opportunity to press on in faith, to grow closer to God, to seek His purpose for our lives. God has given us gifts and talents to use for His glory. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 instructs us, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. When we use our gifts to serve others, we glorify God and bless those around us. No matter what your gift is, it is valuable and necessary in the body of Christ. God is faithful to His promises. Numbers 23.19 reminds us, God is not human, that He should lie, not a human being, that He should change His mind. Does He speak and then not act? Does He promise and not fulfill? We can trust that what God has promised, He will do. His promises are true and reliable, and we can rest in His faithfulness. God's mercy is new every morning. Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23 tells us, And because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. No matter how many times we fail or make mistakes, God's mercy is always available to us. He is always ready to forgive us and give us a new beginning. God's grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 assures us, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When we acknowledge our weaknesses and depend on God's grace, we experience His power in new and profound ways. God's grace enables us to live the life He has called us to live. A life of prayer is a life of power. James 5 verse 16 tells us, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. When we pray, we touch the heart of God and release His power in our lives and the lives of those around us. Prayer is a powerful weapon we have at our disposal, and we should use it constantly. The Bible is the living Word of God. Hebrews 4 verse 12 reminds us, For the Word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. When we read and meditate on the Word of God, we are transformed by His truth. The Bible is our source of wisdom, encouragement, and direction. The Christian life is a life of community. Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25 exhorts us, eh, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. We need each other to grow in faith and live the life God has called us to live. Fellowship with other believers strengthens and encourages us. God is our rock and fortress. Psalm 18 verse 2 declares, The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In the midst of life's storms, we can find safety and protection in God. He is our refuge in times of trouble. God is our shepherd. 
Psalm 23 verse 1 tells us, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Just as a shepherd cares for his sheep, God cares for us. He guides us, protects us, and provides for all our needs. We can trust in his leadership and care. Trust in God is the foundation of our faith. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 encourages us, A trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. When we trust in God, even when we do not understand the paths, we find peace and direction. God's redemption is complete. Colossians 1 verses 13 to 14 assures us, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Through Jesus, we are rescued from sin and death and brought into eternal life. God's redemption is a wonderful and transformative gift. God's presence is constant. Psalm 139 verses 7 to 10 reminds us, E where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. No matter where we are or what we are facing, God is always with us. Life in Christ is a life of freedom. Galatians 5 verse 1 tells us, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. In Christ, we are set free from sin, guilt, and condemnation. We can live in freedom, knowing that we are loved and accepted by God. God is our source of joy. Psalm 16 verse 11 declares, You make known to me the path of life, you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. True joy comes from being in God's presence. When we seek God and spend time with Him, we experience a joy that transcends circumstances. Hope in Christ is the anchor of our soul. Hebrews 6 verse 19 encourages us, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure. Hope in Christ keeps us firm, even in life's storms. We can trust that God is faithful and that He will fulfill all His promises. Life in God is a life of purpose. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has a purpose and a plan for each of us. We can trust that He is working in our lives to bring us to a future full of hope. God's peace guards our hearts and minds. Philippians 4 verse 7 assures us, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we surrender our worries to God and trust in Him, we experience a peace that transcends circumstances and keeps us firm. The Christian life is a life of transformation. Romans 12 verse 2 exhorts us, A do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Through the renewal of our minds by the word of God, we are transformed and empowered to live according to his will. God's grace is abundant. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 reminds us, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. God's grace is a free gift, not something we can earn or deserve. We can live in gratitude for God's abundant grace in our lives. God is our comfort. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4 encourages us, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. God comforts us in our difficulties, so that we can comfort others with the same comfort we receive. God's faithfulness is eternal. Psalm 100 verse 5 assures us, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever, his faithfulness continues through all generations. God's faithfulness has no end. We can trust him today, tomorrow, and forever. God's provision is sufficient. Philippians 4 verse 19 encourages us, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. 
we can trust that God will provide everything we need according to his glorious riches. God's goodness is incomparable. Psalm 34 verse 8 invites us, A taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. When we experience God's goodness, we discover that there is nothing comparable. His goodness sustains us and fills us with joy. God's love is immeasurable. Ephesians 3 verses 18 to 19 encourages us to a grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. God's love is vast and deep, and it fills us with his fullness. God's presence is transformative. Exodus 33 verse 14 assures us, The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. God's presence gives us rest and transforms our lives. When we seek His presence, we are renewed and strengthened. God's mercy is new every morning. Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23 reminds us, And because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. Every day is a new opportunity to experience God's mercy. God's word is truth. John 17 verse 17 tells us, Sanctify them by the truth, your word is truth. When we feed on God's word, we are sanctified and strengthened in his truth. Life in God is a life of victory. 1 John 5 verse 4 encourages us, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Our faith in God gives us victory over the world and its troubles. Communion with God is essential. John 15 verse 5 reminds us, E I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit, apart from me you can do nothing. Remaining in communion with God is essential for a fruitful and abundant life. God's promise is certain. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 assures us, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. We can trust that God will fulfill all his promises. God's direction is secure. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 instructs us, A trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. When we trust in God's direction, we can walk with confidence. God is our strength. Isaiah 40 verse 31 encourages us, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. God's strength sustains and renews us. God's wisdom is perfect. James 1 verse 5 tells us, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. When we seek God's wisdom, he gives it generously. God's peace is incomparable. John 14 verse 27 assures us, A peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. God's peace guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Trust in God is the foundation of our faith. Psalm 37 verse 5 encourages us, A commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him and He will do this. When we commit our lives to God, we can trust that He will act in our favor. God's word is alive and powerful. Hebrews 4 verse 12 reminds us, For the word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. God's word transforms our lives. Now, two videos appear on your screen. They are like windows to a new miracle you need. Click now. I'll see you on the other side.